Hey, this is Matt. Welcome to the whiteboard. In this video, we will be coding quicksort. Coding quicksort is mostly straightforward. Quicksort takes an array. It randomly picks an index in the array and uses the item there as the pivot. Now let's create variables for the less array and the more array. Here they are. Next, we walk the original array, one item at a time, making sure the item is not the pivot, then comparing the item to the pivot item. If the pivot is greater than or equal to the item, put it in the less array. Otherwise, put it in the more array. At this point, we have successfully rearranged the original array so that it is very roughly sorted into three parts. So what next? Here is the return statement. You can see Quicksort puts the parts back together and returns a new array like this. Except there is a difference. And here Quicksort is not straightforward because before the parts are combined, Quicksort calls Quicksort on the less array and the more array. Quicksort is a recursive function, meaning a function that calls itself. A problem in any recursion is, how does it stop? Left to itself, a recursive function will call itself forever. Every recursive function must have a base condition that stops it from calling itself, whether by making the call conditional or making the function return early. So what's the base condition for quicksort? It's when the array is down to one item because a one item array is by definition sorted. Okay, so if we've broken down the array once. Now we have to break down the less and more arrays too. And the process is repeated until we reach the base case where the recursive function stops recursing. The base case is usually handled early. Here we'll check the supplied array. If it is empty or has a single item, it is just returned. When it is returned, it is combined, and in this case, combined and returned again. Recursion is often elegant, short, and easy to understand, like a bow tie or a martini. But like a martini, when there's a problem, it can slip from being simple and magical to absolutely confusing. When you have a problem with recursive functions, remember that they execute one at a time. You can track every step of their progress in a call stack. In this call stack, function one has been called. We'll take it off the stack when it returns, but meanwhile, function one has called function two. And that function takes an array and calls quicksort on it. Quicksort then breaks the array into three parts, the less array, the pivot, and the more array. Then Quicksort calls Quicksort recursively on the less array, which breaks down again to three parts, an empty less array, a pivot, and the single item more array. Then Quicksort calls Quicksort on the empty less array. At this point, three Quicksorts have been added to the call stack. But we have reached the limit because with an empty array, quicksort has reached a base condition. So rather than call another quicksort, it returns the empty array. And the last quicksort is taken off the stack. But now the second quicksort calls another quicksort. So another call goes on the stack. This quicksort call, like the last, also meets the base condition because it has only a single item, so it returns immediately. And the second quicksort can combine all the elements and return two. Now only one quicksort is left on the stack because the second one has returned. Now the first called quicksort gets around to calling the quicksort on its more array and restores the stack to two quicksorts. 
The second quicksort breaks down the more array and adds another quicksort to the stack. And that call rolls up, and another quicksort is called, which also rolls up. So the more array, like the less array, is ready to be combined and returned. And now, quicksort is removed from the stack, leaving a sorted array in function 2, and also leaving these ideas in your brain, not only quicksort, but recursion, base case, and call stack.